how I would describe it is that it's like like mindfulness, and then where you can see a point. This happened. This is how I usually react. Now I'm at this point between A and my A, the trigger and my reaction. Now at this point where I have a choice, I have an option whether I want to react as I usually do, or now I have the option of changing my response. And this is really, really precious. Yeah. But it is not easy to do give any of that if you have an empty cup. Absolutely true. Yeah. So it's not about oh, I'm being selfish or I'm being too self-indulgent. I'm being too narcissistic if I do this. No, you have to fill your own cup first. Hmm. Otherwise, you cannot give. Yes. It's just not possible. Yeah. Yes. We... Yeah. I, I say this as a person who had an empty cup and was trying to do all the things that was supposed to be done and feeling bad about it and then taking it out. On other people <laughs> yes mm -hmm. we often stare at the closed door too long and not noticing that a, a new door has opened and then sometimes we need someone's assistance just to add that perspective for us to turn around and hey there's a door open over there and uh, this is what the emotional or uh, alternative therapy is about sometimes yeah welcome to the holistic human podcast where we talk about nurturing the wholesome human from kids all the way to adulthood. This is the way to fulfill our maximum human potential. Hello everyone, KY here and we welcome a guest today to the Holistic Human Podcast. We have Rimi with us. Hi Rimi! Hi! <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll make a, a short, okay it's not too short, it's actually quite long introduction. She has an extensive CV. So Rimi grew up in the US, then subsequently moved to Japan. So I always praise her that she has very good English. And she completed her from university in, in Sofia University in Tokyo. And I know Rimi from her energy work and her uh, alternative care therapy. So she has multiple certifications, starting from Emotion Code in 2013, The Body Code in 2014, Choice Theory and Reality Therapy in 2016, uh, MAP Method, Manifesting uh, All Possibilities in 2019, Positive Psychology Coaching in 2021, and she received her coaching certifications from ICF and ACC in 2021. Uh, she is not done with that. She is currently uh, pursuing further education into interpersonal neurobiology <clears throat> this year, and she is completing her emotions coaching course tentatively next year. She previously worked in Morgan Stanley and Donna Karen in Japan. And while in Singapore, she was board member of the Walter Steiner School previously. One of the schools my kids are in actually. So cool. And yeah, she has two big kids, age 20 and 17. One cat and many plants. Yeah, <laughs> come with me uh, to the podcast today. Yeah, thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that so, was a so lot. Happy of stuff. to have you on with us. Um, yeah, Rimi, I think my audience would be wondering, like you, you started off very normally, and then what brought you over to the other side? The other side, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I thought about how to explain this, and I thought a story might be helpful to illustrate. So, you know, you have a wife and. Two, multiple kids, right? Not just one, two kids, right? More yeah. than that, I cannot handle, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, you know. So, like, imagine from your viewpoint, right? Your wife is really stressed and she's really depressed all the time. She's angry, frustrated, and exhausted, right? And you understand her, all of her feelings because, you know, she's got a baby to take care of, there's a household to take care of, and you are full-time committed to your work. So you really can't help. At the same time, you're wondering, how can it be so hard, you know? Right? It's one baby only. It's uh, one house, not so big. My mother raised three kids. You know, your mother, like as in his wife, right? She raised um, three kids as well. And why can't you? You have only one. <laughs> Right. But also, this is also going through like your mind. OK, but then you have another child. So now you have two and it just gets worse. You know, she does. She's just more miserable. 
and she's always angry with you, right? Nothing you do seems to work. What would you do? This is what my husband was facing a long time ago. <laughs> and yeah, I faced that too. Yes, I understand. Yeah. Okay. So I did not know, but what he did was he engineered a job overseas. And I had no idea about his engineering. All I heard was that in November, he said, I got a posting in Singapore. We have to move in two months. And so all of a sudden, my whole life got turned around. We have to pack up the house, you know, relocate everything in just two months. But that's how we did it. That's how we ended up in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was when? This was 17 years ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So at first it was great, you know, change of scenery, right? It's very exciting. I got a full-time helper, you know, wow. But then, you know, I noticed that especially after the kids started going to school, I think I was e getting even worse, you know? Mm. Okay. You need to understand, right? Coming now from the wife, so it's me now, right? I was in a place of low self-esteem and high social anxiety. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having to interact with all the teachers and socializing with other parents so that we can arrange play dates, you know, and I'm still trying to carve out my new life. Uh, all of this is extremely stressful. And sometimes I would really blow up over small things and then, you know, take it out on my kids or my husband. And I noticed I was becoming toxic. Mm -hmm. And somehow there was this one point where I was supposed to research for uh, a trip to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Right. And somehow I fell down this rabbit hole and I discovered Dr. Bradley Nelson's video. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't ask me how I got there I'm supposed to research for a holiday <laughs> and I end up watching videos on healing yeah. I have no idea how I managed to get there but it was very intriguing mm. uh, so what I saw him do was help a client heal her knee pain you know over Skype because that's what we used back then mm. right with just a few swipes of this magnet that he had right so he's in the U.S. She is in Germany and mm -hmm. he's doing this it's just a simple technique where he's clearing like maybe five, six emotions from her over a distance. Mm -hmm. And so we only hear their voices. Mm -hmm. But he asks her, okay, can you stand up and walk around? And she's, you know, so she says, okay. And then she walks around and the amazement and the surprise in her voice, I think it was you know, it was real. I do not think it was faked. She was mm. just amazed and astounded. I see. So then I was so hooked. I was like, what is this mod modality? Why have mm. I not heard of it before? Mm. So somehow this was all ordained by the universe because mm. I discovered a practitioner within walking distance in New Zealand from the place that I'm staying at. Mm. Right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is a sign. <laughs> yes. I must go and see this woman. And I did. And I asked her to check my neck because I had some very bad neck pain. I couldn't even turn it to one side. Mm -hmm. right? And so she's like, okay, let's, let's check it out. And so she also cleared some emotions from me. And then she also cleared something called a heart wall. And then I think maybe after 30 minutes, she says, okay, check your neck, please. So I did. And I'm turning my neck this way and that. And there is no pain. Wow, amazing. Yes. Before that, my pain was about eight or nine out of ten. It was mm. quite bad. But then I she does this on my back, <laughs> and then my neck pain is gone. And not only that, I'm feeling this lightness that I've never felt mm. in you know the many years that I could even remember. Wow. Wow. That it must was, be very liberating. It was, it was. I just felt like I floated home. I don't even know how, but I, yeah. And that experience was very eye-opening. During the trip, during the trip in New Zealand, did your husband notice? I don't know if he noticed. <laughs> he might have, but mm. he didn't really share much. Okay, okay. I think with men, maybe, you know, it's not so easy to spot. Yes, yes. I, I felt <laughs> Even different. if you change your hairstyle, sometimes men don't know, right? Yeah, you know, so, okay, that's fine. But at, 
I also wasn't so bothered by that too. You know, if he doesn't notice, okay, you know, what's important is how I feel. Mm. But I realized that that taught me something really important. You know, until then, I thought all my problems that I'm having is due to my personality, you know, or maybe I'm a certain type of human being, like I'm a depressed type of person. You know, so I thought these qualities could never change. But that experience showed me, wow, if I let go of this energy that I can change, you know, so maybe the problem was not me, but my faulty thinking Mm. caused by all of those emotions. Mm. So that was one big realization that I had. Mm. And then the other one was that energy is real. You know, like actually before that, I had a sister, I have a sister who is very much into healing Mm -hmm. and she taught me a lot of things about healing and so on, Mm -hmm. but I was always quite skeptical Mm -hmm. about it. It sounds very woo-woo to me. It's not scientific. You know, how is this going to work? Yes, I get Um, that a lot. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I was like, this is, you know, really silly. (laughs) But the way Dr. Nelson did it, I, it felt to me quite scientific, actually. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And the more I learned that energy, what it's really made of, I was more, I don't know how to describe it. I, I just felt like my eyes were open to a different kind of physical reality. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. I get yeah. what you mean. Yes. Right. And then mm-hmm. the things that healers and spiritual people talk, the way they talk about energy, I realize that, okay, it makes sense. I, I might not use the same words as they do, but they are talking about energy in a, in a science way, just mm-hmm. that they are describing it differently. It's a more feeling based way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you can still describe the same things uh, using science too. And it's mm-hmm. still the same. Mm-hmm. I, I just interject here because yeah, Do- Dr. Bradley Nelson, he's a chiropractic, right? Yes. Yeah. So yes. recently I, I did some uh, deep dives into intention and intuition. So the research of intention uh, has been ongoing. So there's this guy called, he's a PhD, William Teller. So in 1977 to 1979, he started off intention research using <clears throat> gas discharge generators. So a gas will be placed between two anode and cathode plates. And if there's energy being applied, the gas would start releasing electrons and then it will start to form a cascade. And then eventually the gas will release a color. That's why it's called gas discharge generators. So what he does is that when the, when the setup is baseline, there's very, very small flicker. But if he puts intention into the machine, then the gas discharge increases. So, he, so he's thinking, hmm, whether this is electromagnetic in nature. So how, what's the next step? The next step is to install a Faraday cage. So how a Faraday cage listeners to understand is like, like a microwave. If you see the, the door, it has this web-like thing. So you can look into the microwave and then the microwave does not come out to harm you, but it cooks the food inside. Mm-hmm. So a Faraday cage isolates the electromagnetic waves. So he plays the Faraday cage and then he does it again. And then the, the same thing happens. So that mm-hmm. starts him thinking into, is this intention a non-local phenomenon? Then he started doing further and further research. And then the research spanned decades. And in, in another session, in another time, I can probably share deeper. But yes, this intention is non-local. That's why Dr. Bradley can treat like distant clients, even across countries. Yep. I'm back to you. Yeah. Sorry, Remy. I cut you off. No, that, thanks for that explanation. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, based in science Mm -hmm. yeah and that's what also really blew me away Mm -hmm. and so that just I don't know it just led me up from one thing to another my curiosity was piqued and I took the plunge and I went into this journey path Mm -hmm. and then I somehow ended up where I am today (laughs) nice 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 yeah I, I do realize that that in, in, in medicine, we treat when there's, uh, you know, there's illness, there's a disease, you prescribe something. But there's a lot, a lot of things that falls under the spectrum where, you know, you're not really, really ill, but you're not thriving, you're not flourishing. You may be uh, managing or you may be languishing and then you don't know what to do about it. And this is where 
we need to tap into other modalities of healing. And yeah, I'm very thankful uh, for people like you who are around. Yeah, how I got to know Rimi, Rimi is actually, I call her my emotional coach. Yeah, although although uh, she has many other modalities, but chiefly she helped me uh, resolve my uh, emotional blocks. And I really thank her for that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, um, and if you, um, uh, you, you have a lot of things inside your toolbox now, yeah, maybe you can talk a little bit more about emotion code and body code. Okay, so the emotion code and body code, if I would describe them very, very, very simply, it's mm -hmm. like this. The emotion mm -hmm. code is like emotional detox, mm -hmm. okay? And the body code is an energy detox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we we basically try to detect you know what emotional energy or other kind of energy is stuck in you which could be causing you to feel unwell physically or emotionally and clear it it's really as simple as that mm. yeah. i just uh, hop in to add that in in chinese medicine whether it's acupuncture or dcm there is a saying called tong zhe bu tong. What it means is that if there's blockage in energy, pain will come up. If there is no blockage, there is no pain. So it could be physical pain. And then after the acupuncture session, the pain goes away. It could be emotional pain. And then we tap on people like Rimi who can help you release your emotional blocks. And then the emotional pain leaves or you get awareness and insight of what happens. Sometimes it comes up as part of the session. And then you realize that this burden you've been carrying for like so long suddenly gets lifted. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like your neck pain experience, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I met Rimi a long time ago. I think it was 2017. And in subsequent years, I saw her that time she added MAP into her toolbox ID. Maybe you'd like to share a bit on MAP. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the reason why I added MAP on is because mm -hmm. as much as I really liked emotion code and body code, mm -hmm. I even felt that those were a bit slow. I wanted something faster, more effective. You know, what's the next best thing out there? Mm -hmm. And then MAP came sort of into my inbox in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I were to describe, okay, like before, in a simple way, what does MAP do? One of my fellow practitioners had a great, great way to describe it. She mm. said it's like a brain massage. Mm. Yeah. Right? Look forward to one. It was a really good way to describe because in MAP, we understand that people will experience things in their life, events, traumas, you know, and that leads from one thing to another. And so we we get knots and kinks mm. in our in our thinking, you know, not in yes. the real brain, but right in yes. our mind. Yes. And how do you undo them? Holding space for our thoughts and our emotions allows us to change the outcome because when we always react the same way to certain things, we always have the same outcome. And when you get to tweak your response to something, that's how you start to influence small decisions to big ones to all your interpersonal relationships and eventually your life. 